check check one two check check one two let us get a little bit of confirmation in this chat um what's going on a uh, dr lalo blanco r i i think i got that one in sunflower beth uh danny mckay what's going on i'm here with au pack meal give us a uh a audio check one two let us know how it sounds au let everybody hear your beautiful voice Hey guys, I uh, hope everybody's having a good time. Dan McKay and uh, the rest of you guys. Um, looking forward to talking about Patrick Rothfuss and this great story. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, uh, full disclosure, and this is part of the fun for the series for me, but also I hope for you guys, I have not read any of his works. I have investigated him uh, a little bit today. I'm intrigued. He had uh, my curiosity. Now he has my attention, thanks to the great AU Pack Meal. So we're we're gonna start it off uh, really quick. And what's going on? OTDA, hey everyone. Doctor uh, Lalo Blanco. Uh, this is uh, oh, it's uh, Eduardo's uh, granddaughter. I think. Okay. No, no yeah. way. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Yeah. He was a um a patron of mine and a supporter. So nice. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. No, thank you so much um, for being here. Uh, he was uh I, I had minimal contact with him, but he was a supporter of the channel and always a very positive person. And super I, good. I, yeah, absolutely. So thank you for being here. Um, mm -hmm. so we'll start it off. Why don't you kind of give everybody a little bit of an introduction? Um, and this is the King Killer chronicles and you it said is it so well yeah well i was quite i wanted to say slayer because of jamie uh <laughs> you're right uh but no so this is an author he's born 1973 he has his ba from uh, a wisconsin college and then his master's i believe from vermont or somewhere like that washington state right there. here oh in, damn right yeah. there mm. uh it's on the east side of the state we're on the west side but still same thing got a biggie type of deal you know what i mean green pride yeah. yeah but no he's an educated man a learned man uh but also he was a teacher for a while and he i believe the first uh novel was published in 2007 he has worked with <clears> the likes <throat> of george R. R. martin he is somewhat a student of him i would say uh but au is really not really no you are you you are the authority on him so tell us a little bit about this gentleman and his writing yeah he's a really crazy guy to be honest with you um if you watch the, he's got a youtube channel called the eolian and um he does a lot of um live streams just like this and talks about what's his progress and um he does clips from different comic cons uh where he's talking with you know, panelists, uh, you know, Brandon Sanders, um, Robin Hobb, George R. Martin. I mean, he's, he's paneled with them all. And um, basically he's just a, a very young guy. He follows uh, a similar pattern to what uh, J.R.R. Tolkien would write, except for the fact that it's uh, much more uh, George R. Martin, as far as nudity and, and sex and there's different things involved even though again we're talking about a kid that's 12 to 17 years old uh in the majority of the story um so yeah it's it's a great story i love the the uh, interaction um but i'm going to sum up this writing style that he has pretty quickly he writes just like you play a video game mm -hmm. you power up your characters to a certain level and then something happens to where once they're powered up they're not going to continue um gaining and gaining and gaining they have to start over again just like you would if you were in any other video game once you're a, once you're a level 10 you have to start building up to the level 20 a grind you know? yes yes um but not only is it a grind but your weapons have to change your your um, clothing has to change your armor has to change so it's um it, it's a different way of telling a story and, and i've gotten a sense of that it's funny and, and thankful that you did start off this way because i got a sense of like a skyrim i don't know if anybody's ever played skyrim but when he talks about it in his interviews at these comic cons in which you spoke about with george and others uh that he does you know the main protagonist is he a bard um he's he's just he's, a kid 
he's a 12 year old kid and they call them troopers like gypsies where they do plays and they uh, juggle they you know do all kinds of things and they're uh, basically patrons they're they have a, a patron mm -hmm. who's a lord and they literally go all over this lord's prop you know land doing stories and entertaining and then once a year they bring him back to his castle the lord's castle and they do a two-week show basically oh so he's an artist then uh he is yeah oh, okay he is. so yeah that yeah. is uh i mean in layman's terms or my terms bard but he he is a a theater student as we would say now at a university so this exactly. is not a a a sword wheeling protagonist is this correct he Super, super correct. Yes. Oh, okay. So um, he's the one that will tell you about a sword. And um, well, with... that's one of the things that he levels up on is his um, swordsmanship. Is mm -hmm. you know he he gets into a situation where he has to learn how to use it. Um, so to embody and embrace these stories in which he tells epic tales of, but the reality of them. I don't know what you just said, but sure. <laughs> well, he, say that again. If he's an artist, then and he tells epic tales, then there's a uh, Hector, Achilles, uh, Hercules, stuff like that. So he is then put in a grounded situation in which he might need to defend yeah. himself. Is that correct? Just like Frodo, I'm literally uh, fishing here, people. So you know, like I don't know. I have not read. Yeah, these. just like Frodo did um, in uh, the Fellowship. He was just a very happy guy with without any real world experience, and he has to go on this adventure. And unfortunately for the main character, which is named Quoth, uh, he's he's in the same situation. He has to do it. Um, he has no other choice. So and, he's thrown uh, into he chaos. Total. And now there's world building in this, and it's quite um, I, there's quite amount of praise uh, sure. about his world building. Uh, wh what would you compare it as far as George R. R. Martins and Tokens? Of course, those are our go tos, and it might not be fair, but it is life's not fair. It is what it is. Uh, how would you uh, think he holds up as far as his world building? I'm seeing his maps; they look pretty good. Well, not only um, is he is on the same level, but he's excelled them because he's so much younger that merchandising and um, having things that are 3D models are already in place is probably what's causing him to be delayed in his um, story. King McKay's here. Awesome. Great. Thanks for being here. Yeah, an excellent, excellent uh, content creator. Always an honor to have him on and a mm -hmm. fan. And I've noticed that a lot of uh, very, very skilled and very, very, um, you know, knowledgeable uh, as far as storytelling goes, creators do have a, a, a lot of compassion and a lot of love for this writer. So he seems to be kind of on a niche level, right? Like he's not as known as George. He's a little bit younger. He has two out of these three books in this trilogy i'm assuming it would end up with you know the story should end with the next book from the the research i've done but he has a, a series of novellas and he's collaborated as well and there is this uh like kima says really enjoyed patrick james uh on his acquisition incorporated live D, &D games on stage um, and that's how he uh, discovered him. So I'd mm. like to to know exactly what you're talking about there. If that's kind of a Dan Harmon thing or anything like that. Um, and thank you, uh, Sunflower Beth, as well. Um, yeah, and, and stay safe. We've got storms here, too, in case we have an interruption. Uh, I know it's storming in Houston as well. But, yeah, he, he seems to embody this this RPG style, you know, this role playing of, of leveling up and, like, spoke about and he talks about this quite honestly he says george r. r martin was writing for the screen he's a screenwriter he was writing for um uh, beauty and the beast he was writing for the twilight zone he you know a, a, a number of max series. headroom yeah yes so he had his experience he goes i because his books have been optioned when you get option that means they pretty much buy the rights to your mind I looked at this a few nights ago and it is true a lot of things get optioned and not made meaning They'll hold them for a number of years. You get some money. Uh, George has spoken about this as well, but he is not as versed in the screenwriting world as George. He was George was writing for the screen, so because people were asking him about like why hasn't the series came come to TV? Why hasn't it become a movie? Evidently, somebody offered to back up a truck of money to him, and he said no. I call 
I, I don't know anything about him, but I'd still like to back that up. Yeah. Uh, and see if that holds up because everybody takes it eventually. But yeah, he's, he admits to this, that this is a medium that he is not like well versed in, that he is not a screenwriter. He is an author. He writes, li- it, is, it is on the page. He's a literary, you know, he, his prose and his cadence is a literary sense, not a visual sense. So I think that he's a very intriguing author because you have piqued my interest and a number of creators have as well so we have two out of three novels created now he does have quite the slow pace his editor and publisher (laughs) recently came out in a blog a month ago and and i don't know what type of pr this is i could just say shit on both ends because it's not good for either i don't know what advantage there is the like you know kind of uh denouncing and uh you know saying terrible things about one of your actual writers and as well as being a publisher you need to to shill that stuff so it's kind of odd but he has a 14 year process he claimed it it took him to write the first novel and he has been when is the last time in which he published in this series 2000 10 years ago yeah 10 years ago okay so and that is the second book that you're holding up uh actually um this is wise man's fear so this is the second this is the second one but what i wanted to do is show you the thickness of the of the book it's pretty pretty mm-hmm. hefty each one is about a thousand pages um but dr lalo blanco uh are in the comments was talking about this book which is the slow regard of silent things this is just about one of the characters you can see there's quite a bit of difference in the in the book My size. God. and it's and, not the size gentlemen it's how you use it uh but so, also the size same, is significant <laughs> yeah same with the the rogues um that he wrote with george r, r. martin and and um that that novella is very small that's a, another character that's in the books can you um, tell us a little bit about this now this is an in-world character in which he joined george for one of his numerous you know uh, escapades into these uh novellas right you talk about the rogues yeah the so bast story. yeah bast is fey uh you know this the fey realm in this uh world is very real um and some of the characters have fey blood and that's why they ha- they are very magical as compared to the regular humans um but they don't necessarily know it um basque can um glamour himself just like mel mm-hmm. and so he he basically lives his life with the main character um quoth just as another human, as an apprentice, basically. And so he's got a very so deep is, connection. With, is, is this with, a hard magic system or is this, so, it sounds soft magic. It sounds like the, it, the magic, magic exists, is but 10 it was... times better than any other magic you've ever seen because oh. it has a scientific basis, just like electricity, um, just like Wi Fi. You know it's not magic, okay? But the way it's explained in this story, with whether it be sigildry or uh sympathy you know that there is a a connection there that's biological it's not it's not magic even though people think it is magic so it's a technology in which has been lost a uh, a generation before them many years maybe many generations before them was advanced just how we have this thought about our evolution that it's not linear is this what i'm getting absolutely a great way to explain it um and that's one of the things that we find out as we go through this story is that there are people that are trying to erase that entire generation or century or millennia we don't know exactly how long it's been going on but they want to erase this and they want to make it this occult thing not progress not technology they want to make it this like well as you know in country folk and common folk all think that this is the boogeyman you know Mm. the magic and it's just let me teach you how to do it and if you have some talent you can learn how to wire a house and turn on the electricity yeah they're afraid of what they don't understand exactly so now we yeah we so would you say the time period is akin to george r R. martin's of like say the 12 to 13 like 12th century to 13th century. well here's one of the things that's so cool about this is that this is not associated with uh western european uh history this is a totally made up realm and what i love about him as far as the narrator is that he uses a young american uh, named nick padel 
who is probably the best narrator for this particular story because he can speak as the um as the main character at his age and it sounds just like i mean he does all the characters just like roy dotrice does for george Mm -hmm. but it's it's so much better because it sounds just like an american guy now there is a a european um i think he's from the uk but um he he has his own version and to me it sounds terrible because it makes it sound like european history as opposed to just an entirely made up world now you speak about the voice box for our our perspective uh in one of the critical one of the critiques in 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 the negative critique on this and this is a beloved series i think overall people can agree that you know they really enjoy it i i look forward to reading it but if you have any negative reviews and it's important to look at the subjective along with the objective is that this is a objectification of the female the female characters don't have the best representation. I'm trying to think of the best way to say this without crapping on it because I have not read it. They, th- they seem to think that they are something to conquer and they are something to, you know, lust after. And I think that from my perspective, it makes sense to me from the time he started writing. I'm not, like, saying everything's okay, but also he started writing this at a very young age, assuming he didn't have a lot of experience with the opposite sex. Uh, and he did look at it like this. So it's a truthful uh, embodiment of it. Now... Does that make it okay and can it be better? Of course, of course not. You know, it definitely could be better. Uh, what would you say? Because I, I know you've seen this critique as well. This is one of the threads you'll see. This is, if anybody doesn't like this series, it will be because of this. And I'm not going to disrespect that as well because it seems to be an ongoing thread. I will. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's fair, <laughs> but that's fair enough. I mean, like it, it, we're not crapping on it, but it's here's, important to bring up. He, here's the thing. There's a story, there's a character in the story that, is from the fey realm and she embodies sexual desire and um just a a complete sexual realm i mean she's just all of her reputation is based on the fact that she's like a succubus Mm -hmm. she will just uh, entirely take a man and and use him until there's nothing left right and he dies and uh, quite literally um, some people escape, and so they tell the story about this woman, this this fake creature, I should say. Um, but Quoth is actually able to go there and conquer her, even though he is still used and she, he uses her. But it's it's the fact that it, he goes through that process, and I think that's what the what the critics are talking about. Yeah, and and the I just other, want, want to be clear female, that we're not crapping. We're just bringing. I had to bring it up because this is the one criticism of it. People, I don't have my own opinion yet on this because I will read them and I'll give it yeah. to you, and that will still be in a subjective as well as objective, meaning what I see in the text. Uh, but I, I really value a use opinion, and I have to think mm. that it's not some misogynistic piece of work. If if yeah. AU is going to go, I don't think you're going to read some spot and be like, "That's okay." If you take um, that character out of out of the picture the other female characters that are his classmates and his mother um, and go right on down the list they all are very strong women they are very well written and um, he is not um, judgmental in the way that he writes them so i don't want you to get that that impression that that they're all like that yeah, no, absolutely. That That's the one big, I see, you know, con, if you're going to go pros and cons with this. If you see a negative review, it revolves around the um, uh, objectification of the other sex. Uh, and, and it says it's a juvenile depiction. And I can only just think, you know, off of what I know, because I've not read it, that it, well, it might make sense that there's a semblance of that. I'm not saying it's terrible, but there's a semblance of a juvenile's uh, perspective on a uh, the opposite sex because it was a juvenile when he wrote it. Uh, and it is what it is. I've not read it yet. But you wouldn't say that about George's characters. I would in some sense. Yeah. In, in some sense I would, uh, juvenile? I, yeah, I don't, but no, I'm not, I, I don't have a position. This is a storyteller series. We need to know how they tell a story. This mm-hmm. is a major critique. Uh, and there's not many, this is a very successful series. People love it, but this is, if you look up this series, this will be 
a critique that comes up in your main search. I, I right. know because I did the research, so we need to address it, and it is what it is. We're not downing on it, but I use Reddit. I trust they use opinion, and you guys should all have your own opinions, you know, subjective and objective for what's in the text. I would definitely, if I had to bet, and I'm a betting man, I like to gamble. I got that flavor. John, John Taylor's just said it. I thought it was great. Perfect. That's exactly. Yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I don't. I thought it was great. I, I'm not demonizing it. Trust me, guys. <laughs> we have to like just be, it, I can't not bring it because there's, okay. And first off, if there's only one big critique of, of a series, that's not terrible. Like, that's not the worst thing. Like, there's a lot of, you know, negative stuff about you. This is the internet age. So people have an opinion and they like to say the prose is good. I'm like, so what's good about it? They're like, it's good or it's bad. Like, yeah, they don't go into depth. So, yeah, no, we want to touch on that. And I don't want to demonize it. And I want to be very clear that I have not read it. And I, and I look forward to reading it. And my, the inkling I have is I'll probably like it. I'll probably like it. Yeah, if you like audiobooks, I would definitely um, get it on Audible or even. I hate to I hate to have people use YouTube for everything, but um, yeah. there the audio version is on YouTube. Yeah, um, we oh, Justin, me and you are in the blue because we haven't uh, read the books. Yeah, me and Omar have an mm -hmm. ongoing. This is uh, Omar is the Vikings like like mm -hmm. he is the official insight into the viking series like if you i go and i watch a a video that's on some obscure like premiere you know like for a trailer overseas omar's <laughs> up in the comments and i always how many times omar have i said yo bro good to see you and like we'll go and we've debated i think that bjorn will die from his wounds and omar and me i made like a whole series of videos about why i think this is going to happen uh a very uh educated uh gentleman and a very uh, uh, uh fantastic guy to, to get to know because he can look at things you know again objectively and subjectively so it's like well how do you feel about it maybe it could have been done better i'm sure everything could be done my channel could be done everybody could do better <laughs> like everybody could do better like i won't demonize but also if i'm going to do the storyteller series i need to touch on the one critique that that's a major critique and we've done it sure we're done with it i will read it and then I will, I will do my little video that a few hundred people watch and for whatever the fuck that's worth um, if yeah. I if I had any critique, it would be he writes way too slow. Yeah, I don't I, I don't understand um, the fact that when you when he pu first published this book, he already had an outline. So the 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 publisher really was expecting this to be done a lot faster. Oh, just clearly, just like yeah. That blog is <laughs> like again. That is the worst piece of business. <laughs> that I've seen in a while because that doesn't do anybody any favors to disparage. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, like imagine George's publisher. They are a rate. Like they are probably actually pretty pissed. It, it's sure. fair game <laughs> to be, you know what I mean? And his as well. But like when you are a part of a team, like don't go shitting on your golden goose. Penguin publishing. <laughs> <laughs> don't i mean that's ridiculous like my research i told because uh i was so heavy that you brought this because this is a part of the series and you know to be honest uh we're we're ending it uh after next week we will have um a author on that has done the breaking bad uh why you better call saul and and so forth but a you brought to the table something i not only i i literally was not familiar with this gentleman whatsoever and I, and I can't really say I, I still am. I just have done two days of research, right? Like watching interviews, reading a few blogs and, and stuff like that. But that's part of the fun because what we do in this time of COVID in this lull and what we do in any time, but more now than ever, right, is we look for hidden gems. Now, AU, you, you've opened my eyes to something. I respect you as a human being, but I also respect you as uh, somebody that has a good sensibility. Like you have a pretty even balance approach to how you have a critical analysis i i truly you. think that you are able to step outside of personal beliefs and so forth and, and get on with it you know like and, and say okay this is good or it's not good i'm not saying i'm gonna love everything you love but i'm gonna say well it's worth a shot i don't ever think you're gonna send me a dog turd unless i deserve it and be like yeah justin lap that up which mm -hmm. I, I might deserve that dog don't send me a dog <laughs> turd now don't get my address up uh but no but yeah so when i when i get this author like this and we have a series like this like this is something like we talked about with the directors about the way in which they embody sentiment and they convey emotion in a visual sense so you have a prose with an author so as a author 
and again, this is so unfair to be like, what is he like compared to Hemingway? And Hemingway, I don't really know what he's, mm. you know, like everybody wants to be Hemingway, but we all just end up drinking way too much. Uh, <laughs> like, like, honestly, like, and I love the shit out of Hemingway, but get what I mean? Like, could you, but it's a tough spot, bro. But like, give me, give me a little bit of analysis on his pros. You, you get I, what I mean? I would definitely say he's, he's as close to Tolkien um, as I've read. More than George? Um more than George, um, because of the uh, uh, world building, um, I just wanted to answer Omar's question in the chat real quick. Oh, absolutely, quick. man. Um, so I don't prefer this. I, I think this is a great story, and I've probably read it five times, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the Tolkien story is I think the Silmarillion is actually the best book that I've ever read. Um, and, and, it, and it's because it's the most challenging um, as far as the story goes, but this story is so pleasing. It's probably number two. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really entertaining. Um, like I said, the magic um, makes so much sense and is still magic even though it's explainable. Um, yeah, I, I like the question. That's really, really good. Oh, I told you he's inquisitive. Sometimes too inquisitive, and I might have lost that bet on Bjorn. Uh, but no, Omar is one of the best. And we also have Blanco saying, another thing I love about the series is how deep it, it is from the philosophical uh, point of view. Every mm -hmm. paragraph, you can find something worth of a quote in, in real life. So this is something we deal with quite a bit is this... Um, this this dialogue that leads us to bigger questions, this this frame of thought and perspective that leads us to these bigger questions about life and the world and what do we mean? I mean, this is story is a series of change in which we look for stability, just like life is. We experience nothing but change in life and we look for stability within change that pushes you to look for answers because we want stability within the chaos. So, you know, from the philosophical to the theological to the psychological, uh, you definitely get a lot of, um, I don't know, value out of it. Like, I was one of those people up until, during my DJ years especially, I was always looking for, like, historical fiction, right? Like, I wanted only things that were based purely off, like, of of the talent or, or, or you know, the War of the Roses. Like, that's how I got sucked into the Game of Thrones. Like, and then I realized that truth devoid of fact is so powerful. That is so much more powerful, in my opinion, because you are able to have a message that will last longer and a message that can strike deeper if it is truth devoid of fact, meaning there's truth to it, but it's not factual to our timeline uh, because there's deeper truths and we all seek them out because, again, we live through a series of change that we look through stability in. And this is a series that I like the approach. And he does seem to be quite the gamer in his interviews. <laughs> he does. And I love that because I, I'm a gamer. Like, I mean, I'm not like a huge, huge game, but I really like Mountain Blade. I like Skyrim. Like, I, I'm a grinder. Like, I like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I not, well, that sounds weird, but I, uh, no, I, I but, know what you mean. Yeah. You like, I really like to build a character and like, I will have an internal monologue. And I've realized that's the way I played as a child, you know, like with, my little action figures. I always had a story to go along with it. And that transfers on to your adulthood. And hopefully you write something eventually that's meaningful. <laughs> so this series seems to be quite intriguing. It seems like hopefully he'll seal it up. Um, But his other works. So he has a few short stories, right? Is there any other notable things that we like? Because you're, you, you're not, this is not a hypothetical. Like you're selling him to me right now. And yes, I've already bought in, but like, what, what should I do first? Uh, buy this book, The Wise Man's Fear. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like nine, ten dollars on Amazon or whatever. You know, get it however you can get. Uh, it. I know to both through but, using my associate account, uh, please. Uh, it's in the chat or it's in the information. <laughs> if it gives me fifteen dollars, please do so. I'll I'll send you the book. That's no problem. No, 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 no. But, it makes more money for me if people use the link. <laughs> You're missing the point. All right, but continue. But if if you just open up, uh talking about the philosophy the prologue um starts off with a silence of three parts and that's exactly what this is it's just a philosophical understanding of how empty this particular guy's life is at this very moment from the very start of the book and obviously we're 
way after the story starts and he goes back in to talk but um yeah it's it's just a i i think if you just read the first chapter you'd you'd be totally hooked yeah because when i asked you there was plenty of people available like you could have done peter jackson right because he wasn't taken Oh my God. Uh, I, I know well but sorry I, I, but, uh, listen i'm not advocate <laughs> but what i'm saying is a you okay i uh, evidently you didn't like the movies uh but um the point is a you had because he's he's there's people that's been on the series that i've become you know friends with but a you's a friend so like he gets to pick like who he wants and this is who he Thank picked, you. like right away like without and i don't know Obviously, I didn't know who this was, right? It, it, but that is great. I'm not embarrassed about that whatsoever. No, like, no. why would I be? Like, this is what I enjoy and I love about this. Like, and I'm so grateful for it. So it's like, hell yeah, man, do it. Give so when, second. Oh yeah, go ahead, man. So yeah, this is the first thing in which he did. He said, "I, I want Patrick James Ruthbeth," and I had to Google that name immediately. And now I'm aware of it. So now I've seen Quinn's videos. You know, uh, a person in which I've worked panels like cons and stuff like that somebody i have a lot of respect for uh and 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 i found a a few other content creators which i was not aware of one in which i uh tweeted out today which i found an excellent analysis of and that's one of the things i like about this journey is not only like people like quinn have uh you know ideas you know uh, not ideas about ice and fire anymore i think it's Quinn's ideas but somebody that uh a lot of respect for how could you not um agree with him or disagree with him uh his talent is undeniable um and then i found a few other specifically one other youtuber in which i'd never had any contact with me me and him spoke today after i tweeted because nice. i yeah you know what i mean like it's because he had a nice analysis of these series like he had this really nicely and he spoke about something i always try to do like he said there is the subjective meaning like how we feel and then what the author is trying to do so we need to be objective in that sense of like what are they trying to you know achieve which is sometimes hard they're not always so overt with with their intention but at the same time it's a fair analysis so that's what i love about this and that's why i love people like you um for many many reasons but you know this is a lot of fun and now i look forward to it because i look forward to it because yeah there's some people that don't like it welcome to the world (laughs) all right it is what it is like i maybe i i won't like this i won't be afraid to say if i don't uh i i doubt that it seems like it's right up my alley and and it seems like this is a he looked and he saw a hole, meaning a niche, in which he could fill to tell a story through within these times and within the construct of world building. Get what I mean? Within fantasy. I, I really think that from his protagonist, from the little bit of research, and I really stress a little bit, but it seems like he found a niche and there's something different. And that's intriguing because he spent, he, he didn't just say, oh, I found a loophole. He spent 14 years writing that book. Well, you got to remember, he he's writing a hero story and a hero story has a lot in common, you know, as far as who their parents are. It's always usually a male. They always usually have dead parents, you know, like Batman. Um, You know, there's always a tragic story and they always overcome. And so he has a lot that he's building from. So it's not like he came up with this entire series totally without any foundation, but, but he really has nailed the story as far as where this character is coming from it just seems like he looked a little bit outside of the box and he approached it in a very intelligent way uh which i think is making something you love you know um you know div- again a little bit a part of it but a little bit apart from it um and we have omar saying justin what are some of your favorite <laughs> fantasy uh series um i haven't read a huge amount of fantasy but i'm trying currently the witcher series uh book six and four i've not actually read um the the witcher series uh the video games i'm not a huge it's, it's the hard it's a hard read to be honest with you yeah so even though we've seen the tv show and the games they don't follow so, the same there's no yeah similarity if you had read the books first, then you might have been better off. Well, and they're short stories as well. I don't know, Bella. So, like, there is a lot mm. of inspiration, and it's not verbatim. Uh, but uh, honestly, and I, I speak about this a lot, very truthfully, that I am somebody that read a lot of, like, his, like history. You know, like, about the Punic Wars. And I've read, you know, then I'll read Julius Caesar, and I'll do stuff like that. But w- when I 
was introduced to the Son of Ice and Fire, the fantasy that I started reading then was more so essays about stories, like Tolkien's essays about Beowulf um, in, in the fairy stories. I have it right here. On fairy stories by J.R.R. Tolkien. This shows the power of truth devoid of fact. So I am more somebody that reads about writing than somebody that reads a lot of other people's writing, if that makes sense. Like the, I like to analyze story and what it means to people because it's affected me deeply in my own personal life. So I am more likely to read J.R.R. Tolkien's you know, correspondence with uh, C.S. Lewis than I am to read The Similar Alien. Right, like to read like his the or the fellowship like every single book. Not saying I I read the fellowship. I have not got into the similar alien. Uh, but I I'm very interested in breaking down the constructs of story. Like, you know, not just the hero's journey and stuff like that, but a lot of uh stuff like um you have your um uh story by Robert McKay dialogue by robert mckay you have uh, a a fantastic series uh about mythological tales used throughout uh time not only the storyteller telling telling animal but uh other other literature that is literally about literature and i know it sounds lame but that's kind of like my thing that is what like rejuvenates me that's what invigorates me so au is gonna read the similar alien like uh robert from in deep geek is going to read the fellowship just like you do like those are going to be your guys that are going to read those texts i'm going to read about what they appreciate about this genre and the power within <laughs> it and take it as you will you know what i mean take it as you will because i'm really about like the sentiment and the foundation of it and i'm not saying that's better or worse it's just who i am like these minds amaze me they just fascinate me and I really want to get into this like way of these people are geniuses. And they see such power in the in the written word. And I want to understand that. And that's where I come from. That's why I have people like AU and Robert, Gray, Tony. <laughs> that's why I have them on. Because they are the people that are going to read and read the book. I'm the people that are going to get their mail and go through their garbage and try to figure out what they're all about. Understand the poet. Understand the poetry. Uh, and so forth. So, But my fantasy series recommendations would definitely obviously be Son of Ice and Fire, but I think you guys know that. Uh, Tokens, uh, The Fellowship, is. I've actually now read that, and it was fantastic. I have not done the Similar Alien. I barely pronounce it at this moment. Similar Alien. S-I-L-M. Silm. 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 Ma. Ma. Silm. There, there you, you go. go. Yeah, no, I got it. Uh, but when you're on air, there's a little frog in your throat. Uh, silly, silly Marillion. Silly Marillion. You guys know that one. Uh, <laughs> the Silly Marillion. Don't you know? Uh, no, but yeah, like I like his essays. His He has three of them on Beowulf uh, that I also, I have them on hand. Uh, and, and I love them. So it is what it is. And that's why I like the sagas. Uh, Omar knows this very much. We've talked on Reddit. We've talked on Twitter. We've talked quite a bit. And we argued and we appreciate each other. Um, and I respect the hell out of his knowledge. Uh, the, the Nordic sagas, you know, I really appreciate like that because that is what inspired George in token, those Norse sagas right there. So like, I always look for the root, not necessarily the tree. Um, maybe that's why I'll never blossom. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll close it up. Dan, basically same as you, Justin. I read a lot of nonfiction books. That, yeah, I was, um, I was of the mind that, again, like it, it's a big issue of thinking that fic I literally, until I was like 28 years old, I wouldn't read fiction. I seriously was so ignorant to it. I honestly felt like it was a waste of my time. Exactly. And, and this is why I have a channel. That's, because, cause that's I'm, common, I think. I, I, I hope so, because I feel bad about it, right? Like, like this is me, like, this is my enlightenment that you guys, for better or worse, get to see on, <laughs> on video if you watch. But, like, it's why I'm so enthusiastic, because I've just found it in the last six years of my life. Like, I've just found it, and I've found the, the, the value in it. It means so much to me, because it's like, maybe I'm stupid. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's the appreciation of art. Mm -hmm. When you're, when, as a young man, you don't, uh, appreciate it as much as you do it when you're older. 
because maybe you stop respecting so much the accounts of others because you, you see how it's done and there's a question for you uh here au a question for au again have you read the wheel of time series uh our uh malaise melazon book uh of the fallen um planning to read these uh, they're huge they're they're huge they get the giant um and and um need commitment uh so have you read the wheel of time no uh i've read the first two books um and they're so involved that uh, i i decided not to because what do you mean by involved? A, well let me put it to you this way the wheel of time has uh, i believe 11 or 12 of these um so this book is like i said it's about a thousand pages so each one of those is is pretty long and um it's a huge commitment and not only is it a commitment but when i started reading them they weren't finished yet just like this wasn't finished yeah. but i thought for sure by the time i finished these two books i'd be i'd be ready for the third one but uh it's a great question it's a great series and uh i hope one day we'll we'll finish it because obviously they're making a tv show about it so i think it's gonna create a lot of interest in the wheel of time well yeah and uh keen mckay says that um it's a great story but needs more dragons uh me and gray will be talking about uh how the dragon magic works on the son of ice and fire this sunday at 2 p.m uh, nice. on her channel uh check into that uh with a new format i really looking forward to it and another thing is and just to, to cap us off here don't you think that we kind of really appreciate the lack of finality within these there's a trend of stories unfinished <laughs> in which we obsess over i mean you can't deny it right when we get what happened yeah. when we got the end now we know dan and dave fucked up i mean it is what it is it sucked uh but at the same time i think that power and ambiguity is something to be there's something to be said for that man it like, had nothing to do with the start of the of the story though or us appreciating the story so once we read um you know the wheel of time first book or the mm -hmm. the name of the wind or a song um the the game of thrones which is the first book um we were hooked so we couldn't stop there was just no way of of stopping that and and it's just not a it's it, it's not because it's not done because i think we we just assume it's going to eventually be done i mean even tolkien left his his works undone but the uh, fellowship's a complete story and he needed the hobbit the similar alien was well, uh, done by his son uh which is an anthology es essentially or the lore uh that that is his fire of bl in blood i think that there's no denying well i won't deny it that we like that lack of finality because there is a sense of like yes we want this conclusion to this story but ending a story has been proven to drop dopamine levels serotonin levels it is like losing a loved one when you binge something on netflix they've done studies on, on actual you know like brain function and dopamine drops and stuff like that i think that we love we love that ambiguity and i think once it's almost just like once you get that cake you, you it ain't all that sweet <laughs> it really ain't i really think there's something to be said like i don't think george has anything to gain i think he needs to get wins out but a dream of spring i honestly don't think like It'll there's happen. well no 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 i don't no, i'm not saying that i don't because i'm not going to speak for him because i don't know him and i disrespect that and he will do it when he does and i respect that uh, but i don't think there's value in it for him to be honest like i don't think there's a reward in that and also as a reader of these books and a lover of this book i think that it might be left that's left mm. unsaid mm. that ambiguity is powerful man well, this this book is definitely needed for Patrick. Um, I, I don't, I don't think you can say the same. Well, yeah, and I can't because again, for anybody that's just tuning in, I have not read it. So AU mm -hmm. is the person that can speak on this. I I can't do the blanket statement for there. I'm talking about George's work and so forth. Uh, by the way, King McKay said uh, they need more dragons, and in this book, they actually have a dragon type creature. Um, that he encounters and uh, 
actually kills. So oh, let, not, not, not to give it away. But uh, Kim McKay, uh, I put my pants on the same as you. One leg at, at a time. But when my pants are on, I make a dragon. And I need more dragons, baby. More cowbell. So, yeah. No. Yeah, we need more. That That's my best Christopher Walken closet uh, <laughs> uh, impression that I have. I put a parenthesis in places that they don't belong. Um, but, yeah. No, the world could be even back to what it is. But, yeah. I think there's that power and ambiguity. And especially when it's left, like, where it's like, oh, the author just hasn't done it. Because we hate the shit out of it if they leave it ambiguous. Like, a lot of times... Like, I like it. I really do like, like, deciding things for myself because I think that agency over story is something that's very real. And we, we, we find ourselves leaning on people like Dan. Dan and Dave told me Danny was crazy. I'm like, oh, so does that mean you think Danny's crazy? It's like, how much agency do these numbskulls have over you? Like, they're either clowns or they're God. Pick. Like, pick, people. Like, they don't control the grip. The person that holds shit. They have a different character motivation. Amelia Clark has a different motivation in her head. The writers, it, it, you have agency. Well, I heard she was crazy the whole time. Did you guys hear? I'm like, yeah, I heard. All right. Best like, that season is, ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what the hell, man? Like, get off it. Like, get off it, guys. Like, it's like these, these numbskulls are numbskulls. Like, they, they could think that all she wanted was an ice cream. She couldn't get one in King's Landing. So she melted it all in some metaphor terrible metaphor but it doesn't matter same thing it doesn't matter they could think that she you know was a, a, a magical it was all a dream it doesn't matter what they think their thoughts aren't that interesting to me your thoughts are and they should only matter you agency over story i think that power and ambiguity is definitely something that's true and those people that do it well benny Benu does it well i think uh ridley scott does it very well with the original Blade runner so forth uh it, it, i mean it is that lack of um finality speaks to me because i don't ever think there's a great answer to be honest i really don't they should never release anything that's not a director's cut of ridley scott that's all i can say yeah he's like it's 14 hours long but it's gonna be way i don't care i know i'm so much better story oh oh, it is exactly kingdom of heaven how could they release the regular Oh, that just drove me Oh, crazy. It, it, and Kingdom Heaven is a little bit like of a bastardization <sighs> of history, but I don't care. It's still a good movie. With the director's, like his cut. It's still a solid. Now, it is. Nobody should be like, so who are they? They're like, those are Muslims or Saracens or whatever they call them. And like, it's like, no, like that's like, like, I think that it was bad timing. But at the same time, if you just look at the story, like without going into the layers of like historical accuracy, which I don't think you should learn history from television or movies. I think it should intrigue you. It should be a launching pad for your interest in your, sure. in, in your research. It should say, Hey, that's some crazy bullshit. That was fun. Now let me go find out what really happened. Like, you know, and maybe that's not fair because they do kind of voice it as based off true events. That should be a whole bunch of silly bullshit that we made because something might be accurate in this, like at one point. Uh, but yeah, no kingdom of heaven, the direct, his cut is really a beautiful movie. In that, oh man, I'm a big crusader. I, I can't get into it. So we talked, I love it. And it's, it's horrible though. Like it's hor- like that whole depiction of the Saracens and all that. Like, oh man. And Balon, oh bad, very bad. Like not correct whatsoever. It is the total Hollywood shitting on the West and empowering the East. And I'm not making a political statement, but at that time it was post 9-11 and it was like, now we're going over there for oil. And it's just like, you know, they're going to depict it like that. It was very, the, the Crusades are just like all war are complicated, messy, and dirty on all ends. Defensive war at some points for the Franks and so forth. I can't do it, but it is. Yeah. Like, but that's what I mean. Go and inform yourself after. Don't go, the movie told me what happened. Forrest Gump taught me about the Vietnam War, don't you know? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, go around breathing out your mouth. as much as you want to uh, But yeah, it is what it is. But that's an interesting topic, though, for another time of how much do they owe to us for realism? Because unfortunately, there are a lot of people that depend on films doing very bad, very bad choice. Uh, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, so let's see. Dan and Dave are the best writers to, to grace this earth uh yeah oh thank you richard yeah it is what it is like I, i've thought about talking about that before in a few individual videos because it's always been <laughs> a launching pad for me like the tutors i was like oh that's interesting so let me figure out what really happened but i realize not as many people like you know have the time that i choose that aside and what they get is what they get so that kind of forms their opinion so i don't know i don't know 
mean, what are we going to do? Regulate happens like, ah, oh, we got to be all, I mean, it's not a documentary. Documentaries. Watch Gaia. I got a, a subscription a week ago. Oh my God. If that didn't come with a pound of weed, <laughs> like who I put, I tweeted to them. Nobody liked it. I don't care. I said, maybe if you sent me a pound of weed and mushrooms, I would find this interesting, but this is the most ridiculous bullshit I've ever seen. And I'm a conspiracy. Like I'll dive in. I'll get in on that. You know, like I'll wet my beak. Like I'm not really like that much into it, but I'll, I'll, I'll listen. A big, all right. So JFK, there might've been more. Future. I'll go that far. But like, you know, the whole holographic planes going into the towers. I'm not buying that shit. Like, but Gaia TV is just devoid of all that. It's just crazy people, crazy people speaking. I'm like, holy shit, this is insane. You people are crazy. It's bad people. But if you're high, might be have you watched Gaia TV on weed? No, like, yeah, no. don't. Um, yeah. Oh, what's you know what I was amazed at on your uh, storytelling series mm -hmm. is the diversity of the people that you had um, to talk about. You know, um, as far as some of them are just authors, like mm -hmm. like Patrick is just an author, um, and some have done everything. You know. And, and, and I appreciate that because Patrick talks about that at Comic-Con with George about, you know, like how George and, and at his publishers, uh, <laughs> the, um, it was, it was a speaking event with his publisher before she wrote that blog a few weeks ago. That was just a bastardization. Uh, but like he talked about that. He goes, you know, he doesn't have, like, there is a big difference between writing for screen, screenwriting and in writing, you know, for the, for the written word, a literary story, like meaning you you have cadence you have a prose you have a lyrical sense to what you're saying but you don't you know you have to invoke emotion through that that written word not through visuals it is so vastly different and i the medium is a message i i was on with a wonderful canadian heidi from costume co uh, a few nights ago uh, super nice oh my god and it's just like you can't disrespect that you can't say interchangeably the books are better or the show is better who else is better at me than myself and, and, and so forth I'm not great, but it is. Yeah, Speaking great, of great, great, you you need to say hi to Gray Area. I did. I said hi. I, I, she oh, said, I Yo, Justin should be doing comedy. The end. No, I I've written some comedy and I've got a type five. I've written for other people, um, but you know my insecurity uh, gets in there. So no, uh, Gray, I'm I'm looking forward to joining you on Sunday at two. I, I believe we agreed upon um, to do like what you do so well, and you just reinvigorate me and you just get me so pumped up for the house of the dragon in all things a sauna base and fire because there's nothing better than that classic lawn night juice from gray <laughs> there really isn't her podcast obsidian nights is fucking it, it's just i love it like I, I i i love it like it is i've not enjoyed i said after the series end i would not recommend that book to anybody because it's not finished you know what i mean the books aren't finished and then I'm just, oh, I've admitted it twice. And now it's the third time. <laughs> Full turnaround. Read them. <laughs> and read them and have that companion podcast and have that enthusiasm and knowledge that she has. That's rare. That's rare. There's people that have knowledge and then there's people that have enthusiasm. They're usually devoid of one, right? She's got them both. And I love that about her. And then she's got me on as a sidekick on Sunday. So, you know. How does that happen? Well, no, just kidding. I've just got kidding. virtues. <laughs> I've got my own things. I'm good at some stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Cash you, talks, right? What? No. Yeah. Well, yes. It, it, for other people, yes, yes, yes. It definitely does. Please pay me, other people. Uh, but, no. Um, for To be a part of something like that is amazing for me. And it's what I enjoy. Because when I listen to her videos and her podcast, I truly am excited. Usually, I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, like, I'm sure people get it all the time. Justin put out a video. I'm going to have to listen to him. You know, my friends, like other creators, like we don't usually look forward to other works. In my experience, I don't. And there's a few people I do. And she's one of them. Uh, Robert is one of them as well. In Deep Geek. You know, like you look forward to those videos because they, they got their finger on the button and they know how to really make you excited about something, whether or not you've heard it before. So uh, there's something to be said for that. And, you know, you're, you're the pod father. You're the godfather uh, of it all. You've been here and you've supported us all since the beginning. And like I said, I, I do respect your opinion on this. And I'm going to go into the series with an open mind. I'm going to read it. If I'm upset by it and I don't like it, I'm going to come at you. I mean, you're hard there. You know, I, I think it's going to be a fun uh, read. So it's not finished. Is there a release date? Because his publisher just kind of did take a big crap on him publicly. There's no release date, but uh, 
there's no there's no reason not to why start. he's yeah he should he should be finishing that's what she said this yeah. year yeah no no seriously this year i would say um if not january yeah she's like he's a scumbag he needs to, like he's like what is with that like that's he doesn't word. care you know what honestly he doesn't care what they think so it's but it's bad business like for yeah. that pu- i actually look down upon that publisher like for that like that's bad business like that's your client like you make money off those sales so like get with it don't crap on them publicly so everybody that- has their buttons and he that's just their way of thinking they're going to push patrick's buttons i would fire her the next day if i saw that he, i really would probably can no but i'm saying if i i don't I assume she's not the boss of that publishing company. She doesn't own it. Gotcha. I would have okay. fired that person that put out that press release because you are now trashing our product. You know, that's pretty much Walmart saying we're kind of shitty. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a good move. Like, I know you're upset. Like, the toiletries are not there on time. But at the same point, like, you can't shit on it. Get what I mean? Like, it's bad business. It's just not good. Um, Like, call him up. Ream him out. He probably needs it. Like, who cares? Like, you know, do that. Don't go write a blog saying our writer in which we hope to make a lot of money off is a trash bag. And like, you know, he's not putting this out. It wasn't quite that overt, but it was not pleasant. Uh, it's kind of unheard of. So, yeah, I can't imagine they would have a job much longer, but maybe they will. You've um, been on Carrie's channel, right? Um, covering the Night of the Seven Kingdoms. I was. Yeah, she's she's still doing that. I, I got a chance to be on there the other day. That was good. No, the Night of the Seven Kingdoms is good for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and a publisher craps on that. So, yeah, it's just bad. It's just like if Brad Pitt's agent said Brad Pitt sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just that's what I'm trying to say, people. Like it's really stupid. Like I don't know anything yeah. about this relationship other than I know business. Yeah. Like as a simpleton, everybody should understand that that's not good. It's like Quaker Oats. Kind of suck. Like, what are you? I'm like, oh yeah, I do the marketing for Quaker Oats. They're not really oats. So you know suck so um yeah uh, night of the seven kingdom is my favorite uh yeah no i am a big fan of the novellas uh for sure and that's one thing that i really think they should option out for a series and it's one thing that he actually won't give up but uh bless him for that bless him for having something that he sticks his uh um you know well it's so know. similar to the knight's tale that's already been done and I, I think that's probably why they decided not to yeah I, I really thought that that would have been the best one to option out. I think the dance is a really good series to do because we've been devoid of uh, Targaryens, you know, meaning like we have had a lack of Targaryens. Hmm. So let us see a time because all we get is this like exposition. If you're just a show watcher about how great they used to be. So let's show them when there's so many. There's an abundance of Targaryens. Let's show the dance. Let's show why. Because uh, eventually, you know, this is a road to Summer Hall. And then after that, it, it just right. declines from here. So let's show the peak of the Targaryens. If, if this but isn't is, that the problem with pulling the curtain away from the, you know, the wizard? You know? Uh, wait, I mean, it's like, showing the, is that analogy like showing the strings of the puppet? Yeah. I don't think so. Because I think people yearn for it and we have an interest in it. And the interest has been sparked through the show as well as the books about the Targaryen's past, <laughs> George it does one thing consistently, and that is writes lore for the Targaryens. He is enthralled with that dynasty. So oh, yeah. that is the way to go. The author, meaning the origin of this tale, is nothing but motivated. And it's there, and it's there in this... Um, third person perspective as you would say because it's a maester you know mushroom and so forth talking about fire of the blood uh so you don't have to go verbatim uh you can do things with the character dynamic but there's so many great characters as we will start talking about on sunday uh that really will will remind you of some people but also reinvigorate you and i think that the dance is a perfect thing to do Aegon's conquest would be too close to danny's um tale not the, and I know damn well I've read the books. You know, like I I know that it's very different, but at the same time, it's still Targaryen taking over Westeros. We've seen that, and for the high concept aspect, that's not a great way to go. Let's show them at their height of the power. We've seen them at their low point. It only makes sense cinematically to go to them at their high at their high point now, because it was at their low point, 
and then the re you know invigoration and the you know the birth of dragons again it was said to never be able to even be possible what they were before now we get to see what they were before now i could see an argument for what you're saying but i think Aegon's conquest robert's rebellion is a for sure bad choice because you think you want to see characters that we've seen in the series play but no you don't you will you will feel so off once you see robert played by a different once cersei's played by everybody that you know from you know being played on screen that you don't have that uh you know there's no uniqueness yes well well it's going to be different they're not recognizable to you you see them in your mind as as sean bean or as uh lena headley and so forth you know what i mean like you can't do that like that's a big no-no like you don't fuck with that stuff like you don't do it like look at all the shit they got for Rhaegar, right he looks too <laughs> much like his brother i'm like does he <laughs> He looks too much like his brother. It looks exactly like. Well, him. of course he does. But uh, anyways, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you don't mess. You just don't do it. Like you don't do it. People, you got to give people what they want in a way they don't think they want it. Meaning you have to find a different way to go about it. People want certain things. Trust me. I would love to see Robert's rebellion, but George always works off of the time after a big rebellion. Now the dance of the dragons is an exception to. That. And, and the only thing I think that might hinder it is a, the abundance and oversaturation of CGI visual effects, too many dragons. Sure. You know what sure. I mean? Like, uh, and I think they need to play that, uh, tight. It's close to chess. That's just my opinion. But I am, that is the number one thing I was on the panel for the age of heroes. I spoke openly. You can hear the audio about, I didn't think that was going to happen. Didn't happen. Not really feasible. Baron the builder. What did he do? Well, he couldn't have done what he did, so I don't know how you're going to go about it. Uh, you're going to break down that. He works as model myth. He works as his mythological characters that built the wall, high tower, so forth. Uh, you know, uh, likely Brand the Builder would be Brand the Builder Incorporated and his family built all this stuff, like maybe. But it's just not. So uh, it's very interesting, though, and can't wait for it. House of Blood, I think. Looking for House of Blood, and, and this is what George is good at knocking out, too. So, like, this is, like, the one thing that just flows off of his tongue into his hand, blah, 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 writes it, bam. You know, uh, but, yeah, I would really like to see Duncan Egg because this is more, that is more a Frankish, meaning, like, a traditional chivalric setting of tourneys in, in, the in like, the high watermark, right, for the knights, hey, you, like, the time of Duncan Egg. Like, this is when you really start to see in this again, is a tale set after what a rebellion a time where you get to hear about um blood raven and stuff like this so george really does like to besides the dance he really likes to set his stories outside of war you know beyond them or before them uh and he likes to talk about the vietnam vet essentially that is living in 1985 right like that isn't having any glory got nothing but ptsd nobody's nobody's clapping for them sir eustace nobody's clapping for sir useless right they're they got this chest of you know treasures and all these things but it's a chest of misery and he sees that and uh so that's how he writes i don't know that's that's my view house of blood though uh yeah it is what it is um he he, he likes to talk about the warrior after the war uh except for the dance the dance is incredibly well done i think it's going to be great um, I think it's the best uh, pick. And I think that maybe we go back to dance. Or, I mean, uh, the conquest or another period after that. But Duncan Egg, he has an optioned out. He's still supposedly working on it. It is what it is. AU, tell everybody where they can find you, brother. Yeah, basically, I'm on uh, YouTube with AU Pack Neal, the channel there, and also on Twitter and uh, Facebook, all under uh, also Instagram, also um uh, yeah, you can find me on all those places under AU Pack Mule, and uh, usually I'm on other people's channels. Uh, I'll be on Heidi uh, Costume Co. Saturday night. Uh, John St. Baptiste will be talking some Tolkien. There we and, go. And um, yeah, so it's I'm all over the place. Well, thank you for introducing me to another storyteller, giving me another story to enjoy. And we'll close this out right here. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't to AU Pack Mule. Make sure to keep an eye out for new content. We have one more episode, How Peter Gold Tells a Story with Steve Kelsowitz, the guy that wrote the book on Better Call Sal, The Simpsons, and much, much more. We'll play us out. AU, I'll give you the signal.